Hello and welcome back to Let's Play Deadfire with me, Break It Down. Let's continue right. exploring the black market and see if we can't deal with this Vithrek. Yes? I shall be discreet. Oh? I'll see what I can find. This grizzled Otomoa woman looks like she's been left in the sun to dry. Her skin is so worn and weathered, it's hard to tell her wrinkles from her scars. You need a blade or a bludgeon or some sturdy armor? Umani has what you seek. The old woman gives you a grin that multiplies the wrinkles on your face. I'm looking for medicine to cure Drowner's lung. Then you blunt your teeth talking to me. Go and see Ernezo. His shop is just across the way. She points to the door across the tunnel. Show me what you've got. Old Umani's stock is tested in the hands and throats of the fiercest sorts in the gullet. Never will you find a better selection. Rekfu's Fractured Cask. Grants Immortal Will. The wearer is immune to interrupts while they carry one or more injuries. The summit once belonged to a Juana barbarian known throughout the archipelago as Rekvu, Dread of Invaders. Local legends hold that Rekvu appeared only when her forces situation was at its most dire. Rekvu often sustained injuries in battle that would have killed any other warrior, and yet she never died. The next sentence, of course, is near the end of her life. Rekvu was pulled into battle once again, this time against a horde of Aotin unleashed on a quiet mining village by an opportunistic noble from a distant nation. An Aotin wielding a monstrous greatsword caught Rekfu unawares in the thick of the fighting and slammed her blade into Rekfu's head. Rekfu dashed the blood from her eyes and leapt on the Aotin, knocking him to the ground. With one great swing of her axe, Rekfu severed both of the Aotin's heads. When the remaining Aotins were slain and the invading noble's body was quartered and given to the sea, Rekfu dashed the blood from her eyes and pulled off her cracked helmet, only to discover that the Aotin's attack had cleaved her ear clean off. And the Undying Burden. Plus one athletics. Grand second wind, which comes with athletics automatically. Uh, incoming weapon damage is reduced as health is lost. Max minus 10% damage reduction. And plus two constitution. The dear wooden commander Maxel Hess I think it's Hessian. Uh, wore this belt during the Battle of Midmarch Road, one of the opening clashes of the War of Defiance. The dear woodens fought valiantly but their disorganized light infantry was no match for the Adiran Heavy Regiment. Overwhelmed, the rebels were killed nearly to a man. According to several Adiran soldiers, Maxwell was the last to fall. Surrounded and badly wounded, he refused the Adiran commander's offer for quarter. It took a dozen spears to put the rebel down, and even then, he continued to fight until he was beheaded. My gauntlets of reliability, a 15% of misses converted to grazes with proficient weapons. Right, so I am interested in this belt. At the same time, we could probably do with some other upgrades. I'm going to grab this fine plate armor. Oh no, I I'm going to wait. As soon as I buy it, we're going to find it. So hold off for right now. Oh, a stray dog. Algol. While Algol is following you around, any constitution afflictions applied to you wear off more quickly. And party members regain some health when they kill an enemy. If yeah, we're getting that effect, that's a lot. We hear footsteps. Something approaches. Uh, what's going on, guys? I'll see what I can do. I'll see what I can do. 
It is done. Oh cool, the obsidian lamp figurine from the first game. Now, this lamp seems to swallow light, showing no reflection upon its surface. It's cold to the touch, and when held to one's ear, a quiet susurrus can be heard. The lamp is sealed with a piece of cork, on which a single rune is inscribed. Oh? I shall. Okay. Just in case it does devolve into a fight. Yeah. Keep them back there like that. Hmm? Yeah. What is this kith creature? The Vithrak cocks its head and focuses its many eyes on you. Its strange companions also stare at you with unnatural intensity. Also, not at all what I expected a Vithrak to sound like. But they have updated the artwork a bit. A little creepier. <laughs> Ugh, it's making my skin crawl. What secrets does it bring? You feel a gentle scratching in your head. Another voice speaks directly into your mind. Let us see. Let us see. The Vithrak clicks his claws together in delight. Keep your weather eye open, Cap. A fork probe ain't much to worry over, but I'll be a two-headed ogre if that's the only trick up them silk sleeves. Seraphim scrutinizes the Vithrak. Meanwhile, the Vithrak scrabbles and slithers deeper into your mind. What secrets do you want? Any. All. It plunges into your thoughts and fumbles for one. You collect many arcane secrets. Their power flows through you. Will you deny us? The creature's pleading strikes a sharp, high note in your head. It seizes on another thought. Yes. You came to Deadfire seeking knowledge, too. Hey, let's talk instead. Why don't you ask me what you want to know? The language of tongues is a dull, tedious thing. It snaps its mandibles together. Why ask when you can see for yourself? The Vithrak reaches further into your mind, plucking and picking at your memories. I'm surprised there wasn't a resolve check. Or maybe there was, I just failed it. A watcher. The Deerwood. The storm-racked coast of Rawatai. I don't want you in my head. Vithrak withdraws, grinding one of its mandibles peevishly. We wish to only see. To know. Yet kith hide and hoard their secrets. Okay, so if they give me the option to let him back in, I'll let him. Because he did withdraw when I told him I didn't want him to be there. Consent is important. I don't trust this creature. At all. He eyes the Vithrak and looks toward the exit. We have had peaceful interactions with the Vithrak before, so I'm not adverse to peace with the Vithrak. Now the creature's probing psyche traces a question in your mind. Its strange companions stand perfectly still, waiting. Uh, let's go with this first. I need supplies. The Spindleman's Grimoire. Xanathus' Dragon Scaled Grimoire. And this would be handy later. We can't afford it right now. Alright, uh, Sis Sisyphos or Sisyphos Zone. Sisyphos. I'm gonna call it that. A futility, minus 2% action speed and damage to attacker for 15 seconds when we're hit in melee. As punishment for his crimes, the mage and mass murderer Sisypho was condemned by the Committee of Upright Study but spared execution due to unfavorable political repercussions. Instead, he was imprisoned and sentenced to endlessly levitate a large stone above his head, while chemical potions eliminated his need for food, drink, or sleep. While the levitation demanded nothing from Sisypho physically, it was mentally exhausting. After many years of torment, Sisypho's sister, the insane wizard 
Aquila, stormed the prison and set her brother free by driving the mythic Wedge of Wift into the stone, shattering it. She and Sisypho escaped to continue their mad reign of terror and destruction, but not before collecting a shard of the stone. This amulet was made from that shard. And Mortification Bindings, plus 2 max Mortification. Yeah, it's a monk ability. Now these are the hand wraps of a monk. They're interwoven with shards of bone and bits of glass, which cause great pain to the wearer, elevating mind and body. Okay, so right word to amulet. It's called an amulet. An N instead of an M. 15% uh, resistance against poison, disease, and decay attacks. Another obsidian lamp figurine. Ring of regeneration, plus one health restored per six seconds. The simple wire wi ring cannot read today. Wire ring is forged from living iron. It still contains a small well of healing soul energy. And a white witch mask. Gaze in despair. Ability activated when wearer becomes bloodied. Grants Ringram's repulsive visage. Look not upon. Grants Ringram's enervating terror. And fearful geometric. Geometries, not geometrics. Plus one all illusion power levels. That would actually go really well with my main character. How much does that cost? Oh, it's not very expensive. Let's buy that. Well, let's read it first. Uh, this is said to be the mask of Basu Zhujak, an evil Delim. I forgot how the W is pronounced. Delim Pirgra of Nazi Tak myth. According to legend, she would often lure children from the safety of their villages into the woods. There she would confound their minds, causing them to become lost and frightened. As her victims wandered further into her domain, Basa Zhuzhak would fill their hearts with ever-increasing dread. Eventually, she would reveal herself, her terrible face concealed beneath a mask made of leaves, bark, and other dying things. When the child, terrified beyond sanity, could endure no more, Basa Zhuzhak would lower her mask, revealing her true visage. Her victims, it is said, then died of fright. I don't think this is worth it. Such a minuscule amount of health regeneration. If we needed it outside of combat, like if you didn't heal up automatically after combat was over, it would probably be worth investing in. Now I will say the fights seem to take a little longer in this game than the first one did. Or than they did in the first one. So I think there's an argument to be made for it. I, I'm not going to buy it. Uh, do I do have anything to sell. Oh, a bunch of stuff to sell. Uh, the creature's probing psyche traces a question in your mind. The strange companions stand perfectly still, waiting. What are you doing in the gullet? We dig. There are many mines here with many secrets, many depths with even more. A city under a city. Another in the ruins. It teems with young secrets, rivalries, and betrayals. We seek the older secrets, buried deeper and carved on weathered stone. Your friends, the broken down creatures of this place, they know the old secrets. They know, but they do not tell me. Will you tell me a secret? It snaps its mouth parts together in irritation. 
Not when you have been such a miser with your own. Fine. I'll tell you a secret. I assume you're volunteering one of your own. <laughs> he coughs delicately. Yes. It chitters excitedly. The gods were created by the Inguithans. It stops and considers, one fang trembling. You feel it tasting your thoughts for the truth. Yes. You have been generous with us. The ogres nod slowly. There is a place below the slums, old, cold, and abandoned, where the city swallows those it wishes forgotten. But this place was once part of the city. So was its temple, a site holy to the goddess of distant, forgotten things. That's obviously referencing Andra. Its eyes gleam. Will you tell me a secret? Alright, read that already. Not when you have been such a miser with your own. Let's tell him another secret. Yes. I was nearly killed by Aethys, and restored by Barith. I read that already as well. He's just gauging the truth of it. Yes. There is a place. But All right. This place so he just gives the same secret over and over again. City. Let's get out of that dialogue. Okay. Uh, your snooping has upset some of your neighbors. It chitters in disgust. The elf gnashes her teeth. His is a small mind with small concerns. What do you care for him? You. The elf abruptly falls silent. Her mouth still hanging open. The Vithrak drops her mind like a toy it has grown bored with. It turns its attention to yours. You feel it shuffling through your thoughts, as though it were turning pages in a book. Images arise in your mind. Memories. You see Pitley, stifling her coughs as she tells you about the Drowner's Lung Medicine. And you see Arnezzo. Muster your willpower against the Vithrak. You push the Vithrak out, and your mind clears for one blissful moment. Then, the creature squirms past your defenses, and renews its invasion. Let us see! Let us see! The Vithrak delves deeper. It sees you in Ernezzo's shop, talking to the merchant. You ask about the Drowner's Lung Medicine, and Ernezzo begins to answer. The Vithrak chitters with interest. Drive the Vithrak out of your mind. You concentrate and draw your mind into a smooth, blank pain, as still as an iced-over lake. You gently draw your thoughts beneath it, where the Vithrak cannot reach them. The creature screeches with annoyance. One of the ogres echoes the sound with a gravelly roar. What is your secret? Why do you hide your thoughts of the cellar woman from us? Its eyes twitch with curiosity. Its associates stare at you, unblinking. Cellar woman. The one who calls herself Ernesto. It waves a claw in impatience, a gesture that is mirrored by one of the ogres. It's Ernesto, with Z's. What is this droning sound? You have a fly in your teeth. That's an interesting detail. So Vithrax don't have a, a concept of the letter Z. Its mandibles jerk with interest. What is your business with the cellar woman? Its eyes twitch with curiosity. I think we just read this. Uh, its associates stare at you, unblinking. Ernezo is a man. As you say, we discern no difference. Ernezo wants me to kill you in exchange for a rare medicine. You tell us a secret freely? What a rare thing, a wondrous thing. Yes, this Ernesto speaks little to us, but her thoughts say much. We know she plots against us. But you know how to hide a secret, so we will tell you one. It nearly dances with excitement, tapping its curved claws together. The elf sways and claps softly. 
There is a hidden entrance to her storeroom. Its eyes flash and flicker. Follow the wooden catwalk east of her shop. This is where she moves supplies in secret for Dario. Why tell me this? We want to see you betray Ernesto with her own secret. Take the medicine you desire. It sidles closer. The ogre and the elf also take a couple steps forward. Their eyes blink, expression still. If you also exterminate her, then we can sell you special things at special prices. Its mouth parts clack and tap with glee. Though the other seller women and seller men might think angry thoughts of you then. Tell me what you know about Ernetzo. She fears us, fears that we will gather and scatter her secrets. Ernesto sells many things to common people, but also to powerful criminals who command many. This is why her shop has a secret entrance. Follow the wooden catwalk east of her shop. This is where she moves supplies in secret for Dario. So I'm in a bit of a conundrum. I told Ernesto I would kill the spindle man. He does have items that I want to purchase from him, but I can't afford yet. Well, hold on. Well, I guess there's nothing that I necessarily want that badly. I wonder if we can get two of these, if we both buy it from him and loot it from the um, container behind him. We'll hold off on it for right now. Uh, sure. We will complete the contract for Ernesto. Like, we will... Unfortunately, we have to kill the spindle man. I was hoping to convince him to leave. But it does seem like we have to kill him. I wonder if we just kill him, because I don't like Vithrax, Which how they up? take control of other creatures. So I'm wondering if we can just kill the Vithrak and I'll release the rest of the um, folks in there. Subtle indeed. Subtle indeed. It is done. Alright, Drenner's Lung Medicine. The bottle holds an un unappealing brown sludge, but it's a cure for the deadly disease known as Drowner's Lung. A sharp piney odor leaks past the cork. A lord's foot, Senator. Oh, I can't. We could just leave and complete that quest, but we're not done here. It's a shame that if you kill a merchant, you'll get all their loot. At least I'm assuming that's how it works. Back up. No shops this way, stranger. The thug holds up surprisingly smooth hands, stepping in front of you. What are you guarding? You think I'm standing here so I can tell you about it? Come on, go! He flicks his fingers in a shooing motion. His nails shine in the torchlight. How do I get permission to pass? <sighs> That's up to Dario. He drums his long nails against his hip. Like how infatuated we are with his hands. I'm looking for Mad Marina. She works in the Undercroft. If you say so. Only way you're getting by is with Dario's approval. Where might I find Dario? It's your neck. Once you leave the row, go right from the stall, left at the crossroads, then down the alleyway. If you see Svef stains on the floor, you're going the right way. Delver's row has plenty to offer, but it's that way. He extends a well-manicured finger to point over your shoulder. 
His other hand rests on the hilt of his weapon. All right. Well, we ran out of things to do here until uh, we go speak to Dario. So, unfortunately, we have a quest to accomplish. But it's fine. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's stuff we find pretty early in the game, so we'd mm -hmm. end up replacing most of it over time, I'd assume, anyway. So. so, I have a new skill. Oh, that's from the um, helmet. Follow. Another. You are. Yes. But this place was one. Oh, I can't attack him now. Because I took the medicine? At least not in dialogue, so if I just attack him outright, what happens? This is wrong, Watcher. Well, I lost my backline tank. Um. Hmm. <laughs> what do I do about that? You must meet, boy. Something I can do? Get your fog back there. Try to debuff these guys that are attacking my main character. And what's going on with Adair? Oh, he's dominated, but he's not doing anything, so. It does work in my favor, at least. That's right. What do you need? Oh, I'm on it. Awesome, that's one down. Uh, let's go after the next ogre. Or, I guess the spider. Let's do the spider next. is almost down. Let's take care of her real quick. Yeah. I'm happy to oblige. All right, so what was that effect?
Yes, I think this is granted automatically when he's bloodied. Yes, yeah, so Ringrim's repulsive visage is automatically activated. Okay, cool. Such a good helmet. Or I guess mask in this case. going but they're not gonna win this fight -uh, didn't work yeah. <laughs> what for cap see you must me too in fact let's go ahead and have her go into melee here yeah <laughs> sorry friend uh, go around this way if you don't uh -huh. mind get dressed yeah. Take him down. Ha. Hey, watch it with that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's it. That dog won't hunt. Oh, keep shooting, Seraphin. Uh, do this first, though. Let's take this jokester out. See you must me too, man. Oh, did I click on the wrong person? Oh no, okay, it was the spindle man. Just making sure. This is futile! Fare thee well, Kog Swabber. Hogwash! Ahoy. Done and done. Yes, yeah, so I could have gone the alternate path and just taken the medicine and left, but I had made a promise. I agreed to do a contract. That's part of my character's thing. All right, the spindle man's key. Uh, the surface of this key is tacky and encrusted with dust. We'll never get those items, but we did get a Vethrak brain, which is used for crafting. So, where is that? And we got the obsidian lamp figurine. What for, Cap? Which is also done really done. good. I was hoping... Ah, uh, that's right. I killed everyone else besides the Vithrak first. I should have tried to kill the Vithrak first to release these people. But either way, now the Vithrak can't take other people's minds over. Because really, if he wasn't taking away people's free will... I have nothing against the guy. But... Doesn't mean I wouldn't have killed him still because I did have a contract, which is. Uh, it's hard to, to roleplay that sometimes. Uh, where is this figurine at? But it does make for an uh, interesting playthrough. I give this to Aloth instead. He already has a couple. Um, yeah, Seraphim should either be shooting or. Casting, so I'm not going to give it to him. What for? Done and done. All right, uh, we'll park in front of Netzo's shop. Renazo, what's his name? Already forgot. Renazo. Uh, we'll turn in that quest next time. Uh, I wonder if he'll attack us when he realizes the medicine is gone. I guess we'll see. I wonder if I can pick this from the other side and get the experience. Let's do that real quick before I forget. Let's take a look. I'll see what it shouldn't I can automatically do. open. It should just 
give us the experience. <laughs> the work Ahoy. of a moment. Nice. Done done. This way we're double dipping. Well, I wonder. It'd be cool if we stole it, and he can't find it, so he has to give us another reward. But we still get the medicine, which kind of undermines the contract a little bit. Hmm. Ah <laughs> uh, well. Um. I mean, he won't know that, so it's fine. All right. Gonna call it here. Our next episode, we'll level up, speak to Renetzo, and return the medicine to Pitley. But for now, thanks for watching. Hope to see you guys in the next one.